Hello everybody, this is Charlie Two Crow. I'm coming to you from the Crow's Nest. We're going to have a little podcast here. What we're going to do is look at the lighter side of being an Indian. We're going to have a little political satire. We're going to have a little humor, good Indian jokes, good clean Indian material. I got a phone call the other day from a friend of mine, running late, who happens to be a Chickasaw Indian. Basically, we were visiting for a little while, and he brought up something I thought was quite relevant. He said, you know, when a white man came, the buffalo left, but the bull remained. Man's got a point right there. I was also visiting with some friends of mine up in the Northeast. There are Algonquins and some Mohicans up there. And we were discussing the fact that the white man came over and landed at Pilgrim Rock and was greeted by a bunch of Algonquins and Mohicans. And he said that whole thing, as he understood it from history, was kind of a misconception to both sides, just a little misunderstanding. When the Indians came out and they said, how, white men just took off. Well, how an Algonquin at that particular time meant, passport, please, we'd like to check your papers. They didn't do it. This is what we got into. So you look down at the border in South Texas, same song, second verse. Also, when the white man came over, they went down to Manhattan Island and liked it. Not much there then, but, you know, it's picked up considerable. And what they did was they found one of the Indians that said he owned the place, said, I'll give you $24 worth of beads. Well, if this had been today, instead of back then with all the Indian casinos, an Indian would have taken him aside and said, say, I can show you how to double that if you're interested. Now, also back in the 1800s, there were a lot of Indian treaties, and I mean lots of Indian treaties. Well, you know, when you negotiate with somebody who doesn't speak the language, doesn't know the law, doesn't have a clue, it's easy to get whatever you want. So white men, they just had treaties from the Indians from every which way but up. It was so bad in the 1800s when Congress met. One of the congressmen got up and go to the bathroom, said, have you got any Indian treaties laying around? Now, I do want to tell you one thing. Charlie Two Crow is an Indian. When he grew up, Nobody played cowboys and indigenous. There weren't any cigar store indigenous. And you didn't see John Wayne say, hey, circle the wagon. The indigenous are about to die. Anyway, in every tribe, there's a hierarchy. You got your governor. You got your chief. You got your legislators. You got your medicine man, maybe your shaman, your wise man. And then they've got the, hey, you. Well, Charlie Two Crows happened to be one of those, hey, you Indians. So he's not up there toward the top. When they wrote these treaties for the Indians, and they wrote tons of them. You're writing a treaty in a language the Indians don't understand, can't deal with. But anyway, they put these treaties out, and most of them have the same thing. The land is yours so long as the grass grows and the water flows. Well, folks, the problem with that, as I see it, is most of the grass is blacktop or concrete, and the water is not fit to drink or do anything with. So we've got a problem getting the land back. Anyway, uh, lots been going on here lately, especially in the state of Oklahoma. One of my friends from up around uh, Tahlequah called me, and we got to discussing the governor. And I think we ought to be informal here. We just call Governor Stiff from here on Big Kev. Hello, Big Kev happens to be part Cherokee, which I don't know if you know or not. But anyway, he is, and, and we was visiting. And what one of the problems was is when a child is born, It inherits the wisdom and the intelligence 
of one of the elders who has recently passed away. Well, the problem is when old Big Kev was born, nobody died. And I've got a lot of friends of mine that uh, they like to collect Indian artifacts and Indian heritage, and most of them are into uh, arrowheads. And I asked him how things were going. I said, oh, they have finally hit the mother load of arrowheads. He said, his collection has increased probably 20, 30 times over. I said, well, did you hit a place where they had a lot of maybe wars or disagreements? He said, no. Just once a day early in the morning, they go to the governor's mansion and pull all of the arrows out of his tires. That would be one way to do it. Well, things have been progressing pretty well over the past few weeks. There's a lot of powwows going on these days all over the state. One of the biggest one down in Anadarko, a friend of mine lives down there. He was telling me all about it. He said there were reports, quote, just reports, that Governor Stett was down there at the powwow. Nobody saw him. And they said, well, how do you know that he was down there? said somebody saw his car up at the Capitol later. And there were beads and feathers in his grill. So I guess that could explain that. Now, Ryan Walters, one of our uh, elected officials in Oklahoma, had been starting to pot as much as he had. Governor uh, Stead, old big calf, he's been in there. And I I've got a problem. Uh, if we go through and we upgrade Oklahoma's education, where are we going to get our legislators from? Now, being an Indian, I need to get in my hunting. So this last year, I decided I would go turkey hunting. Never been before. So I went out and bought me a camouflage suit, heavy-duty boots, a hat, turkey call. I got everything that they had to offer in the sporting goods section. So I went out and practiced on my call. I could call turkeys from miles away. They couldn't see me coming. Turkey day, I'm out there, first day of the season, crawling along so none of them can see them. Blow my turkey crawl. Finally, when I see what I need, I sneak up. There's about 20 birds, one of them about the size, probably about 14 to 16 pounds. I stood up. Brand new shotgun. Leveled him out, boy. And then after that, you should have heard the cries and the screaming at that Walmart. Can't ever go back to that place. So anyway, that's all we've got from the crow's nest this time. This is Charlie Two Crow. Send me your humor stories, jokes, whatever you've got. Send them to Charlie Two Crow, no E, at gmail.com. And don't forget, Red Power.